For this example, I'm going to show you how to complete a hypothesis test and construct a confidence interval um, for cl a claim about two population means. And we're going to show you how to do this on StatCrunch. So first we have a summary of a data set here with two different populations. One was given a treatment, one was given a placebo. So we have our sample sizes, we have our sample means, and we have our standard deviations. Um, so first we want to set up the uh, null and alternative hypothesis, and this section got a little bit covered up here, but we were testing the claim that the means were equal. So the correct choice here would be this one, where the null hypothesis is that the is always equal, so mu1 equals mu2, and so therefore the alternative would have to be not equal, since our claim was also equal. The test statistic can be calculated by hand, so I'll show you how to do that. It is sample mean 1 minus sample mean 2 minus claim mean 1 minus claim mean 2, which this always equals 0, divide by square root of sample standard deviation 1 squared over n1 plus sample standard deviation 2 squared over n2. So using the data we have here, it would be 2.35 minus 2.62 divided by the square root of 0.64 squared over 35 plus 0.94 squared divided by 30. So enter this calculation in. Now it wants you to round it to two decimal places. So this calculation is going to give you rounded to two places, negative 1.33. You can also get the test statistic when you do your hypothesis test. It's given to you in the summary of your data using StatCrunch. So you do need to practice doing it by hand, but also know that you can verify it on StatCrunch. The p-value we know cannot be exactly found in our student t-distribution table, so we have to have technology to calculate the p-value. So here's how we would do the p-value on your StatCrunch. So go to your StatCrunch and go to Stat and go to t-stats. This is two samples, and it's two samples with a summary. So that's the steps for pulling this up. It's a t-stat test, and you have summary data for two samples. And then just type in your summary data that was given to you in that table. So our sample mean 1 was 2.35, sample standard deviation 0.64, and that first sample size was 35. Um, the second sample mean was 2.62, with a standard deviation of 0.94 and a sample size of 30. It's really important to uncheck this box for pool variances. Make sure that is unchecked. And let's do the hypothesis test first. So the null was mu1 minus mu2 equals 0. The alternative was mu1 minus mu2 is either not equal, less than, or greater. So this is going to either match your claim, or in this case it has to be not equal because the claim was equals. So just leave this part checked here. The other test we can come back and do is the confidence interval test, but we have to do it one at a time. Um, you can also select to store it in a data table if you want to. And that way you can kind of leave it up and look back at your results. So let's compute this. And looking at this row up here in my table, um, you can see the t-stat is negative 1.33. That's exactly what we calculated by hand. There's our p-value, 0.18927. So that's going to be our answer for the p-value. Now, let's say I want to do the um, confidence interval test. So if we go back and look at the um, information again, the p-value is 0.189, state a conclusion for the test. Um, so here you have to, if we're doing the p-value method, you're going to convair, compare your p-value, 0.189, to the significance level of the test, which is 0 0.10. 0 0.189 is greater than that significance level, so you would fail to reject the null. And using the appropriate wording, there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim.
that the two samples are from populations with the same mean. Um, so then when we do the confidence interval, then we have to know confidence level, so that's a little bit different. Um, this is a two-tailed test because the claim has equality. So when the claim has equality, you have two tails. And also when we do a confidence level, it is also a two-tailed test. And so our alpha, 0 0.10, is the area in these tails combined. So if we split that up, we have 0 0.05 in each tail, which adds up to 10%. And so our confidence level is in the middle. It's going to be 90% confidence level. OK, so now that we know the confidence level, we can go back and we can compute the um, confidence interval using StatCrunch. So go to Stat, T-Stats, to sample with summary and enter your information. So the sample mean 2.35, standard deviation 0.64, sample size was 35, and then we had a sample mean of 2.65 or 2.62, standard deviation was 0.94, and sample size was 30. Uncheck the pool variances and check confidence interval and your level is 0.90. Let's not store it in the data table just to see what that looks like. So hit compute and this time it just gives you the information like this. And so we have our lower limit. This is the first number, negative 0.6100. So depending on how they want you to round it, that would be your lower limit and your upper limit 0 0.0700. They do have a error there, margin of error, so that if you're a little bit off using a different method, it should still count it right. right. Notice the degrees of freedom is 49.9 for this test. Um, degrees of freedom using technology is a pretty advanced calculation, and it's more precise, and it's different from the degrees of freedom shortcut that we learn when we do it by hand. We learned to just take the smaller sample size and do n minus 1 for the smaller sample size. This is very different because our smaller sample size was 30, so we would use a degrees of freedom of 29 if we did it by hand. So I just wanted to point that out, that degrees of freedom will always be different on StatCrunch because they're doing a different calculation for it. So there we go. So if you had actually calculated your in interval by hand using um, the degrees of freedom that we learned to use, you would come up with the different limits. And so that's why on StatCrunch you're going to need to use the StatCrunch technology to get your lower limit and upper limit there. Um, another thing here is if you um, do this method, you can save this data, you can print it, um, you can delete it. So there's different options that you have there. Um, so there you go. So that's how you can do a confidence interval, and you can do your hypothesis test, getting your p-value, using StatCrunch. So again, it's stat, t-stats, to sample, with summary, enter in your data and change it depending on what you want to do. Always uncheck the pool variances.